Okay, so now that we know how to install the jQuery library, we need to know how to talk to it. And I'm going to kind of teach you the syntax here. And it's pretty easy. Don't let it get too confusing. Remember, the most confusing thing about all this and what you're going to have the most trouble with when you debug things are making sure that your syntax is correct. So parentheses, close parentheses, semicolon at the end of a line, things like that. So we'll kind of work slow as we go through these to make sure those are correct. Um, what I want to do here is I've set up a document. And this is more or less what we set up in the last one. Uh, but between the two movies, I added some things to it to make it feel more like a web page. Um, one, just a couple things to note is I am using 960 in here. That's neither here nor there for this example. But right here, I did select the Google API, and that's how I'm running this. The JS uh, folder, scripts.js, is where this is kind of command center here. And you can see that this is the same stuff we talked about in the last movie. And I'm going to write all my scripts in this set on load callback function. Okay, So here's how we get started. Um, let's go back to the HTML for a second. And what we're going to do is I have a series of links at the top top of my page, link one, link two, link three, and link four. Real complicated. Uh, and they're simply set up kind of like we did a couple tutorials ago inside an unordered list. And then I have those styled. So let's go over to the browser and let's just see what these look like real quick. Uh, and refresh the page. And here they are. I didn't round corners or anything. We'll deal with all that in a minute. But I have my four links at the top of the page. Okay, That's all we're really going to concentrate on in this example. Now let's talk about what I've done to target these. I've given each one an ID. And so here's the ID link one one, the ID of link two, the ID link three and four. So that's an optional thing and we you might want it to run some stuff with. But what we're going to do is how to target these and how to make something happen. Okay, so essentially when you're dealing with jQuery, you have two things. There's what they call selectors or these are objects. So it's something on the page that you're going to select. Okay, So you have a selector and then you have what's called an event. And this is what you need to bind together. Okay, So these are a bunch of terms I'm throwing at you, but you just, just understand that we have to have an event to trigger the action. Okay, So this needs to be something like when the page is loaded, that's an event. Uh, when the user clicks on something, that's an event. And when the user rolls their mouse over something, something happens. So oh, no, a rollover state would be an event. Okay, So let's go back over real quick. And I want to show you, if we go to jQuery.com, there's a link on the top that says documentation. You're probably going to be consulting this a lot, so please bookmark it. Please don't feel free, or please don't be intimidated by it. There's a lot of stuff in here, uh, but the main things we're talking about right now are selectors and events. And if I go down here, here's an API reference. I'm going to select uh, events from this column over here, and here's a bunch of events. So there's a bind event, a blur event, a change, click, double click, delegate, die, error, event dot current target, event data, and so. We're we're not going to go through what all these mean right now, but these are various events you can have that things could happen. So, for instance, uh, focus is usually when um, uh, you know something is either tabbed over to, like a form field, or clicked on. Uh, you know, you have all kinds of things. You can load external data. Uh, that would be an event once the data is loaded. So, it needs to be very versatile to handle any event you could get. So, right now, we're just going to worry about the click event. It sounds pretty easy. So, let's go over here, and what I want to do is make it so that let's just use the alert function, and so let's alert something when one of these is clicked on. And that's just a simple JavaScript. We're going to use jQuery to do it. Let's come over here and in the on the set on load callback, we need to start with the selector. So think of this as like writing a sentence. Okay, So if you're taking a foreign language or an English class or something, you would write a sentence and it has a subject and a verb. So we start with the selector and we follow it with the event and you have to end your sentence with that semicolon. Okay, So this is how it works. You always start with a dollar sign. This is how it knows it's a selector. Dollar sign followed by parentheses. Okay, and inside those parentheses, you're going to have a quote or a set of quotes, sorry, and you're going to put what that selector is inside of that. Okay, so for instance, let's go back over to index.html. You would, you're going to use this a lot like you do with CSS. So for instance, if I want to click this first link here and have it do something, I can reference it by the ID of link one, just like we can in a style sheet or in CSS. So what I would say is pound symbol link one. Excuse me, and link two. I can do link two also. It's in there. But okay, so this is how a selector works. It's a dollar sign with parentheses. Inside the parentheses are single quotes or double quotes, whichever you choose. Uh, keep them consistent. And then you're going to target it much like you do CSS. So I could say pound link one. Okay. Now comes the event. So we're going to put a dot because we chain everything together with dots. So we're going to say dot click. And this is kind of like a function, so it needs two parentheses. And let's put a semicolon at the end. Okay. So what we've done is we've we've bound, we've binded an event to a selector. So this means 
on it's going to go through the document it's going to look for the id of link one and it's going to say hey when that's clicked on that's the event something happens and what happens goes in parentheses now here's where it gets confusing again much like that set on load callback we have to have a function inside of here okay so just make sure that you open and close everything correctly so let's just go ahead and say function and it's going to be open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open bracket, close bracket. Okay. In between the two brackets, I'm going to drop a line. And I just do this to keep things clean. Okay. So what we're now saying is when link one is clicked on, this is going to happen. So we've we've bound that event to the selector. And we can write anything in here. We're just going to have an alert window open. So we'll say alert. And then we'll just say clicked. And we will put a semicolon there. So let's go back over and refresh the page. Go back to my demo here. And when I click on link one, lo and behold, I get an alert window that says clicked. I could also do something like I could feed the ID back in there, something like that. We'll, we'll talk about how to get more advanced with this later. But we're going to alert clicked, okay? And let's, let's, let's use something else as a selector. We could use something, remember this is much like CSS, so it just has to go in those quotes, parentheses with the dollar sign. But if I say A, that means any anchor tag that's clicked on will have that function call, so alert click. So now if I go back over, you can see, refresh the page, I can click on any of these links and it gives me the alert window that says clicked. So this is working. So that's how I target that. Um, this probably isn't a best practice for this because if I have like links on other parts of the page, I don't want them to have the same functions. So what we can do is much like CSS, we can use classes and a mixture of things to link down into things. So if I go back over to the index.html, you can see that I have <clears throat> this div, the class equals grid 12, and then the, I put a secondary class called nav. So let's use that to target. So any link that falls inside the nav div, okay? So we can go back over here and we'll say dot nav, because that's the class of nav, and then any, any link, so dot nav space a. And this means only links or only anchor tags inside the nav class will be affected. So this is a lot like CSS, but we're adding functionality. So there won't, no change here. These are all, all done. Um, so it's very nice. You can do that. Um, I'm going to show you one other type of selector before we close this, this tutorial here. And the selector is the this. Okay. And what we've done is we've said, okay, so on the selector, we're going to run this function. If I use um, another, uh, let's see, uh, let's say alert. I can't spell today. Alert. And then in parentheses, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this dot ID and put my semicolon there. And so what that's saying is whichever was clicked on, that's what this means, that's the object, this object. And then I'm going to say this, the ID, okay? And remember IDs back here in the HTML are basically here's your href, ID equals link one. So it's going to, it's going. that's what's going to alert back is the name of that ID. So let's go back, refresh the page. And now when I click on, see there's link two. If I click on link one, it says link one link three. So you can start to see there's a lot of functionality going on here. And when we start morphing and doing animations and things like that, this comes in very handy. Okay. So anyway, so that's basically how you do those two things. What we're doing is we're taking a selector and we're binding it to an event and you use that with a dot. And then we have to put a function inside the event to talk about what functionality we're going to have. So anyway, once again, take it slow, uh, work through the example slowly, and I'll see you guys in the next.